All right. Hello, and, and welcome to our, uh, our September 18th meeting of our Charter Review Commission. Uh, we always start off our thing with public comments and welcoming uh, uh, our good friend Beth Wortman uh, for coming. Uh, so we have got uh, 15 minutes for public comment. If anyone in the public would like to comment, now is your chance. Well, why don't you slide around over here next to BK and we'll, or this side. Hi. Hello, my name is Patty Morrison and I am new to Saratoga. And my question this evening is, will the charter, the full draft of the charter, or final of the charter be sent out to citizens? And can that happen? Okay. So, uh, at this point, that's our plan. In early October, having a complete uh, financial analysis, an overview, and the complete charter document. Okay, and that'll be going out to all the households? That's correct. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. you bet. And I'd just like to let you know, in answering that question, I'd just like to let you know it's already available at a website, that it can be looked up by anybody who wants it. But anyway, it, it is available. It's a public document at this point. And Beth Wortman, do you want to tell us the website? SaratogaCharter.com. There you go. Uh, any other uh, public comment? Great. Did you want to state for the record that the charter has also been sent to the Board of Elections at this point? At least it has as far as emails I read. So yes. it's already pursuant to the requirements. It's already down to the Board of Elections. Great. Um, so, uh, again, now it's the, the President's report. My first thing I was going to say is that, um, again, it's very exciting. We have been... Uh, uh, approved uh, for the ballot. Uh, the ballot question uh, was sent down by John Frank um, and uh, was approved by the Board of Elections. Uh, it uses the language from the New York State government. Um, should I approve the minutes now? Or? Yeah. Probably. We should probably approve the minutes. So the Secretary and Bullock. Gotten, whoops, thanks. Everybody should have gotten minutes that are erroneously identified as June 13, 2017. I only caught that this morning, uh, which were actually August 22nd. With that minor clarification, were there any other objections, changes? Nope, I'd like good. to offer the August 22nd minutes for approval. Second. All right. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, Consider them approved. Um, Mr. Chairman, could I interrupt the proceedings for recognition of one of our members, please? Sure. Uh, it's just come to my attention that uh, Medita Sangvi this evening was appointed to fill a vacancy on the Saratoga Springs Library Board. Oh, oh congratulations. Uh, the congratulations civic or condolences as appropriate. <laughs> the civic capacity of our members knows no bounds. Uh, again, I, I also want to uh, thank you all, as well as the, uh, the public for he here, uh, for engaging in the democratic deliberation. My uh, freshman seminar, Real Democracy, uh, is here, and uh, I am grateful for you all modeling the, uh, what engaged citizenship looks like here, but also for, our, uh, uh, again, our, our, our members of the public in the audience. So, again, I appreciate that um, tremendously. Um, there have been a number of uh, house parties that have been going forward about educating the charter. There's been um, uh, uh, debates. There, I know the League of Women Voters debate is this Thursday night. Uh, I'm sorry, a panel discussion. It's just a panel discussion. Okay. Public information. All right, panel discussion and public information. Uh, if people in the public are watching and they would like a uh, house party or public forum, uh, we would we would love to we would love to be there. Uh, we're looking to reach out to as many voters as possible, and you can email us at Saratoga Springs Charter at gmail.com. So we hope to hear from you. Can I uh, also add to that no. list of things? We have 11 house parties scheduled already, four more to be confirmed this week. I believe I'm plugged in. I just have that soft voice. I said that we have 11 house events planned, four more to be con uh, confirmed this week. And then we have Meet the Manager Night, which is an event that allows the public to interact with, you know, several city managers that we're going to bring in, bless you, um, on October 2nd, 
October 18th and October, excuse me, the last date is November 2nd. All of them will begin at 7 and end at quarter to 9. Second, 18, and, and second. And they will all be at? The library. Great. All right, so they'll be there. They'll be, we're going to try to live stream them so that people who can't make it there that night will have the ability to see them. But I'd encourage anybody who is you know, unfamiliar with this to, to go sit and talk with these people because oftentimes, you know, we're, we're asked by people to answer certain questions. And I think it's so appropriate that these folks will be there to answer the questions as mm -hmm. they see it. And I think it, it will be very helpful. And uh, seeing capacity is almost 150 people there, so I think we should... We should be good to uh, to have that. So, all right. Um, and members of the public, if they wanted to submit a question, they could they could certainly email it, or they could send us a question via uh, the commission's Facebook page. So, whatever is uh, is convenient for you. All right. So our our business tonight is really to uh, approve the mailings and the contents of the mailings that are going to go out. Um, the first thing uh, that we have to approve is the cover sheet. Uh, again, I emailed it all to you. Uh, it reads as follow. Uh, again, and I apologize that we uh, were unable to make this work. Um, uh, but it says, uh, on November 7th, two seven, I'm sorry, dear fellow citizens, on November 7th, 2017, the voters of Saratoga Springs will be asked to approve the proposed charter. This question will appear on the ballot. Maybe it should be on the back of the ballot. Back on the ballot. Should we say on the back of the ballot? It's on the ballot. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Maybe it's good to tell them that they're going to need to turn it over. Okay. Um, so it'll just say on the back of the ballot, Saratoga Springs Charter Review, shall the new city charter proposed by the City Charter Commission be adopted? That's all in bold. Voters will be asked to vote yes or no. To help inform voters... Attached is, one, a brief summary of the proposed charter, two, a fiscal impact statement, and three, the proposed charter. Voters can find additional information on the Charter Review Commission's website at saratogacharter.com or email questions to, and I want to change that. I had Saratoga Charter, but that's not correct. It should be springscharter at gmail.com. Sincerely... I use my big grown-up name, Robert C. Turner, uh, PhD Chair of the Saratoga Springs Charter Review Commission, uh, and the members of the Charter Review Commission, and then I list all of your names, and I hope that you made sure that I spelled them all correctly. I, I'm looking, and I don't think I spelled yours. What, what should that? The, my first name ends with an M. An M, that's what I thought. Okay, there we go. And um, uh, oh, I should put the people's titles. You think? Yep. Okay. Do yeah. you think we should have the titles? Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer. I don't. No, I don't think so. Right. But okay. I wondered if, like, the formatting of this could look um, like an official letterhead kind of thing on it. And maybe even could we have actual signatures as long as we had, they don't need to be, you know, like different kinds of fonts that are like mm -hmm. Lucinda and those different ones, to, just to make it look like signatures but clearly written so that you can actually um, read them. Well, I could spread out the names. You could actually sort of sign it. We know Matt's signature will be. I, that's why I was saying use one of the um, fonts that are available, like in Word, but use different fonts. You know, there's a whole bunch of scripty kinds of fonts. I don't think it's going to add value, Barb. What? I don't think that adds value. I just don't. You don't think it just yeah. looks nicer? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I don't. Yeah. I'm just this, my answer. If you put a logo here, this will drop down a little. Mm. We make two columns out of the names. Yeah. We make yeah. two columns out of the names. <laughs> Okay. I would be. I, I'm my my uh, my mantra on this uh, mailing is to make it as official looking as possible without a lot of um, graphic uh, treatment. Uh, just there, because I think it, it should look uh -huh. like a, a piece of official business that is going to the voters, and I think that will 
elicit their attention, uh, you know, and, um, and engagement. And could we have the font in 14 speaking for all the seniors? <laughs> uh, I, there you I go. See, Did you, was, I, that a, was that a motion, Bob? I, I think the sellers is are endorsing that, yes. Mr. Chairman? On the mm -hmm. 14 point on the letter. The, the, yeah. the document itself, I think, is already set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it would change the pagination. No, we whatever. can't do that. No. What about our, our photo next to the names? No, no. I think we sort of felt that that might be... Um, too much. Too much. I think was uh, yeah. could, Mr. Com uh, Jones' suggestion. Could I, could I also say, in deference to uh, Matt and, and Elio and anybody else that did not vote in favor of this document when it was finally adopted, that I don't think we want to communicate the idea even w without any other intentions, okay? We don't want to communicate the idea that everybody on that list voted exactly the same way on everything that had to do with this thing. I, I think that would be a disservice to um, those that didn't support it. And so I think signatures and all that kind of stuff kind of makes it look like that might have been the case. And a picture certainly looks like it's our team against everybody, uh, whatever else. So I think I would steer away from that sort of uh, treatment just out of uh, deference to the, uh, the minority. Probably under the no one's ever going to care about this uh, category, <laughs> uh, but um, I, I think it should be signed by the chair. Um, and, and once you list the members, then you get into that circumstance in which um, voted no, or was abstained, was not present, that kind of thing. So to avoid that, it seems like signing uh, by the chair. And if it is signed by the chair, then I don't have any difficulty with, uh, we'll be asked to approve the proposed charter because the majority is asking. But n not all of us are, are asking that, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I think more technically you would want to consider uh, are going to be asked to vote on the proposed mm -hmm. charter as opposed to approve. Right. Um, I like Matt's idea. Yeah. Yeah. And is it intentional that in the bold question there it's lowercase? Shall the new city charter proposed by the city charter commission be adopted? That's the that's the verbatim language okay. from the that's in the state law. Okay. So. That, that's also how we send it to the board of elections. What, what I don't understand yeah. is the previous line that just says Sir, to the Springs yeah, Charter Review. Done. What is that? Um, so the um, on the state law. State law. So. Uh, that's actually what it will, will say because there's going to be four ballot questions on the back of the ballot. And the first three are going to be sort of New York uh, state constitutional questions. So they come before the city. And so we were a little bit nervous that all of a sudden there would be this line that says, you know, shall the new city charter proposed by the city charter commission be adopted? And that it wasn't, after having three state ones, we wanted to make sure that it was, it was very clear what it was. And just to kind of move it along, I, I move that we amend the letter uh, to substitute the word vote uh, in place of the word approve and to remove the names of the members um, at the foot of the letter, leaving only uh, a signatory, uh, uh, the signature of the chair. I put that in the form of a motion. Um, can, we, can we possibly split those? Because I'm a little more enthusiastic about one of those than the other. You get to vote no, then, I guess, on that uh, amendment. Okay. Uh, could we, could you accept the friendly amendment to add the word on? You did. So vote on? Yeah, that's what he said originally. I know. Okay. Yes, I would. <laughs> um. Second. Oh. So. Or the chair could do it. Uh, so it was uh, to change the language instead of saying will, the voters of Saratoga Springs will be asked to approve the proposed charter, it will now say to vote on the proposed charter. This question will appear on the back of the ballot. So you, it would say voters and vote on. Yep. Yeah. No, Could be this. How about the citizens? No, it's voters. The voters. So you've got to be registered to vote. Fair enough. I think you were just being asked to explain what the motion is. Uh, so that's the first part of it. Uh, 
And the second part of it was to strike all the names. So instead of it saying at the bottom, the members of the Charter Review Commission, and listing your our 15 names, um, get in there. I'm, uh, well, I, I have a comment on that. I mean, it's been, it's been proposed and it's been seconded. And I think, I think uh, despite how we voted, I think it's good to have an indication of, a, of the presence of a group mm -hmm. in that letter mm -hmm. so that it's not just some chair signing it. I mean, these are real people who have worked on this. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this for personal recognition. I'm just saying it for people to understand that there was a process in which their fellow citizens, a bunch of them, were really involved. Mm -hmm. So I, I wish we could keep these things. So I, I, I would like the vote on idea, but I want the names, you know, written down so people see the the number of people who were on the commission. I'm with you on that too. I strongly believe Matt's suggestion that it should be changed from approved to vote on is is uh, important, but having our names is just as important because it, it shows the public, the people who worked on this, and puts a real face to our efforts. So um, in a sort of Robert Terusi sort of way, I would um, make an amendment to Matt's motion um, to separate the two different questions so that we would have one question about changing the wording in the first line of the letter and another um, motion to um, decide about the names on the, um, char on the letter. Yeah, probably the motion uh, to amend uh, so as to remove the names and just vote on the first thing first. Oh yeah, maybe that's, you're better at that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider that as a friendly amendment? Not a friendly amendment. But get a second, and then we can dispose of it. I second. All right. So uh, we'll vote on the first part. So we'll change the, that first line to on November 7th, 2017, the voters of Saratoga Springs will be asked to vote on the proposed charter. That's how it will read. Fair enough. All right. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That would be 10 to 0. Uh, so on the second question about 11. 11. 11. Oh, 11. 11. I didn't count myself, sorry. Uh, so on the second question about removing the names of the members of the Charter Re Review Commission, um, is there anything you'd like to? Uh, only then if they're going to remain, there should be a designation um, of those who voted in the affirmative, those who voted in the negative, and those who were not present. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, I am a member of the commission, but I do not support uh, the result, and I think that would cause confusion, uh, which is what I was trying to avoid. Uh, well, Matt, actually, do you not support allowing voters to vote on it? I do. Absolutely do. So with the amended language in the first line, wouldn't you support having this presented to the voters? Wouldn't I, you want your name on there? Uh, um, I do. That, that's closer. Uh, hence, the, the the first amendment saying not no longer to approve. I think it's it's easier. It is more informative to the voters, I believe, to tell the voters how the members of the commission voted on the overall uh, document. It it is not necessary to. Um, I don't want to say conceal because conceal is not the right word. We're not concealing anything. Everybody really knows it. But I, I think it just is more informative, and that's uh, why. I, uh, are, we, are we discussing that uh, right now? Mm -hmm. I, my, my, my view on that is that actually I think that's not appropriate to in the document like this to tell people how people voted. I, I, I believe that these are the people who served on the commission which the, and this commission has put a question on the ballot for people to decide. And uh, whether they, and people are going to decide whether they want to charter or not. And I don't think this is the time or the place to let people know how the commission members voted and what the points were and who voted yes, who voted no. That's my view. 
Well, I'd agree with BK. It's already part of the public record, and there's no reason to, to continue that reporting. This falls under the nobody really cares, so we could probably just dispense with it and move on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Can we take a vote? We'll take a vote. All right. So all in favor of removing uh, the text, the members of the Charter Review Commission and the 15 names. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Nay. 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 Uh, okay. I believe the, uh, the nays have it. <laughs> so, um, uh, so and um, it, and and it, but in, in full disclosure, um, I do I, I I hear your point, Matt, and I think when I read this, I think it is it is clear that the members of the Charter Review Commission do not do this, and and where I think it would be um, a mistake is that your. Uh, I don't want to say your your fingerprints, but your your intellectual contributions to this document are significant. Even as you have may have opposed the overall thrust, you have certainly made it a, a far stronger in innumerable places. And I would I would hate for the historical record not to have <laughs> to have your contributions denied. Honestly, we're thinking about a statue, but we're afraid someone will take it down as soon as we put it up. <laughs> All right. Rich. So, uh, so, uh, um, and so, I heard someone said that they wanted to also felt like we should add the city logo at the top. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where one gets the city logo, but I will find one. Uh, there's someone on the table out here. We can cut and paste. Cut and paste. Great. The one on our website. No. That the one on the, yeah, the city. You have it on the website. The yeah, Indian, bring it over like from the website. Yeah. Yeah. With the Indians inside. We got it. Yes. Okay. We got you all taken care of. Native Americans. <laughs> we got you all. I actually think I got it on Google Images, but yeah. Okay. It wasn't that. Well, all right. Great item. All right. Sorry. So I will consider that um, uh, that. Uh, let me just save it. Um, sorry. So I don't go home. Final cover. Sheet. Okay. Uh, so the the second uh, object is uh, for discussion. Uh, is the, the fiscal impact statement uh, drafted by uh, Jeff Altamari. Bob, before we continue, uh, if there's going to be discussion about this document, I noticed in what you had sent out to the uh, members of the commission, there was an Excel spreadsheet and there was, actually you didn't have this document, I forwarded it on your behalf because oh, okay. we, we had finished it, okay? Yeah. But uh, was it your intention to include that Excel spreadsheet document? No. Okay, that was just FYI. That was just, I sent that out. Those are the numbers I good. had. I just didn't, I couldn't find that. Okay, we're good that then. Because that, that should not also be included. Just this one. Just this one. There's one pager. One pager. Great. Um, uh, second. Well, I believe we want to discuss it, right? We move it, we second it, we discuss it, right? Okay. Yeah, yes. we will. We, yeah. we will, but we'll get it on the table Second. first. All right. Jeff, so this is, this is being moved to be included as a mailing yeah. to the citizens. Yeah. Yes. I, I so believe moved. I would say Jeff moved it since it's his document and I seconded it. Okay, that's fine. Is that okay? Great. Um, uh, dis discussion of said document. My, my only question would be, is there a way to better state the city manager's salary with benefits? And I know it says with benefits, but I, my feeling is so many people look at that and look at that line item and say that's their salary. I would be happy to break that out between base salary and benefits if, they, if, the, if the team, if the team, if the commission thinks that that might be more appropriate. That's, that's I think a very add uh, some clarity for a reasonable ex 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 I think uh, a question. Good. Yep. Um, so just uh, for our PowerPoint deprived people in the audience, um, this uh, statement uh, clarifies um, the uh, four areas which will reduce spending and the, the three areas that will increase spending. Uh, the ones that will increase, uh, reduce the full of five full-time deputies with benefits, 568000 the reduction of four commissioners. $58,000 in saving, reduction of four commissioners' benefits, $72,000, uh, 
increase in mayor's salary, 26,000, addition of one professional city manager with benefits, 194,000, and addition of six uh, council members, maybe it should be city council members? Mm-hmm. Um, so two amendments actually? Uh, 87,000, yeah. And then it has estimated future annual savings based on the new charter, 391,000. And what would the, um, <coughs> the breakout be, Jeff, on the 125, Gordon, for base, and 69,000 for uh, benefits? That's using a 55.1% yep. benefit rate. Which is the same as which is the same as being used in the city. Right. It's the city's rate. Right. Well, shouldn't we do the same for the first line then? Break it out. And they. Oh, for the five full-time deputies. Yes. Probably should be the same. Also, um, for the second line reduction of four commissioners, mm -hmm. we need to put in reduction of four commissioners' salaries, not just. Right. <laughs> sure. And um, it's, yeah, it's not euthanasia. I, I, got, I got that. Okay. And and you added the l last line addition of six. Whoa, whoa. Let's like uh, I, you got I, it. I'm hearing it for two people. Okay, so I will break out the uh, deputies from the benefits, but not the individual. I won't list individual deputies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Salaries, benefits is the same um, same deal there. Okay. Okay. So. First line broken out, four commissioners' salaries is second, right, Manita? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, reduction of four commissioners' benefits, okay. Increase in uh, mayor's salary, okay. Uh, I could put parenthetically 14.5 to 40,000 if you wish. I thought about that, but. I, I don't think it's necessary. I, I, don't want, I don't want this thing to get too cloudy, all right. Uh, and then the, uh, the professional city manager at 125 plus the Bennies. And then the addition of six city council members. Um, and yeah, it's, it salaries. should say salaries okay. and benefits if we are offering benefits, so in which case. You know, not. These are not, these are so not, salaries, yeah. Salaries, no benefits. Yeah. Right. I, I think we should write that though. Salaries, no benefits. Okay. All right. I try very hard in this disclosure to avoid advocacy. I just want you all to know that. Uh, so, you know. I was an accountant for 40 years, and believe me, there's ways of slanting things, so I'm trying to be as objective as possible. Just want you all to know that. Um, Jeff, do you want to talk a little bit about how uh, I think it was, I forget one of the, it was, I think it was one of the August meetings or perhaps late July meetings. You had, you showed a, an, an earlier version of this mm -hmm. um, in which you had included, um, parenthetically, a, a, an estimate for a salary for um, a, what was it? Um, an assistant city manager and yeah. uh, in a full-time city attorney. Can you sort of talk about why sure. you, you took that out? Okay. Well, we've had a lot of discussion uh, collectively, and there, a lot of numbers have been run. I've heard people in the community say the numbers are always changing. Well, you know, this hasn't really become a, f a finished product until quite recently, so I don't think we have to apologize for that. Uh, I think as we embarked on this discussion, we collectively reached a point where we said, look, it might really be in the best interest of the voters just to draw a hard line and say, in the current salary, current charter, we have X, and in the proposed charter, we have Y. Let's just identify the deltas, okay, in terms of people, if salaries are enumerated, and let's stop there, because everything beyond that, everything beyond what is strictly within the context of, of the proposed charter language is conjecture. Now. What I, said to the, what I said to the commission multiple times, and I believe this strongly, uh, is, I mean, being a businessman myself and having you know, worked in a Fortune 500 company, my first question is, okay, but then what actually happens? What does the city manager do? What's our organization going to look like? How much is that going to cost us? Okay? So we collectively talked about what might be reasonable you know, iterative steps. We kind of honed in on a couple of things. We know that, the, for example, in Batavia, there's an assistant city manager. There is not one in, in uh, Watertown, <clears throat> but there are in other places. We thought, you know, that would not be an untoward addition. We also talked about the fact that we probably would like to have a really good full-time city attorney and maybe eliminate one of the part-time attorneys because in this role, this attorney could help in purchasing, procurement, like we had a, you know, a chief counsel, and also help on the legislative slide with the council issues. So collectively, we kind of danced around that and th thought that was okay as well. Uh, and also talked about the impact of an internal auditor. 
But going back three steps, I think it was prudent, it is prudent of us to draw the line so that someone can hold these two charters up and go, I get it, I see the difference, there's the number, that's quanti quanti quantified. Any other dialogue, any other questions that may be asked about this, you know, the advo advocates and the advocacy groups can talk about that or the people who are opposed to it can talk about that. That's, that's fair game for everybody, okay? But I think we would be going out on a limb, uh, ch Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> if we were to, to say, and by the way, this is a hypothetical but highly realistic model of where things may go after the hiring of a city manager. So I thought in the interest of objectivity and clarity, I would keep it limited to these line items. Do, does that make sense? Okay. W one other thing I wanted to, to mention, uh, if I may just go on for a moment, okay? Please. I've heard comments, and, and they're well-intended comments from the community. Gee, can't we have somebody certify this? I'm a former CPA, former member of the New York State Society, former member of the AICPA. I was in public accounting with uh, the, lar the largest international firm for several years. You cannot audit events that have not, or, that have not already occurred. Okay, that is, that is it's a non sequitur, okay? What, what the SEC allows is what's called safe harbor language, okay? And this, is sort of, this sort of mimics that. And you'll see that in financial statements when big companies publish their results. The results are clearly audited. Then they say, next year or next quarter, we expect X, Y, and Z. But they say it with a disclaimer. This is based on be, you know, best faith efforts. Uh, we, we, there's no guarantee of realization here. Things could go awry, blah, blah. I made an attempt to mimic SEC safe harbor language here because I thought, you know, why not, why not take advantage of that, of that uh, concept? And I think, frankly, it would make the, the membership here, the members of our commission, feel better if we weren't certifying, guaranteeing, or saying this is going to happen. These numbers could well not happen at all. They could be better than this. They could be worse than this. But this is kind of a, we have to put a stake in the sand. The law requires us to issue a, discla a disclosure statement. So that's why we did that. So I just want you to understand that those weren't just some, I wasn't just making some arbitrary points. I was really looking to protections offered under SEC law, okay, even though we are not clearly guided by SEC law, but the concept in f the financial world of safe harbor language and disclaimers is quite common. Mm -hmm. And so can you just, um, you know, uh, at some of the meetings I, I've heard, right, we have that transition language about, uh, that the deputies, the deputy commissioners can stay on the payroll for kind of a little bit of an ind indefinite time period. We've sort of envisioned for a, a transition. Do you want to sort of comment on, on that and how one might sort of uh, try and estimate that? Well, Bob, for the very same reason, I did not go out on a limb and talk about conjecture of organizational, you know, uh, issues, salaries, and so on. I felt, you know, I will be very frank with you, I clearly do not have an estimate in my own mind of what a transition period would, would be, albeit it would be a short one. Uh, I don't think it would be material, uh, material in terms of costs, and let's just say material defined as some number south of $50,000, okay? I don't believe that. Um, I, I think when one present values the savings between what we're currently, our current run rate and what this offers, and you look at the net present value of that, of that calculus, mm -hmm. whatever we're talking about in transition is so de minimis it's not even, it's hardly worth the mention, okay? But that's just an observation. Uh, could I? Yeah, sure. Um, I think this is conservative in two ways. Number one, it's conservative in the estimation of the savings because, again, the conjectural savings could be much greater. But the ones that are actually on paper in the document that the voters will be voting on is what we're showing on this document. We, uh, and we had a lot of conversation about this. Uh, and I, I felt, and Jeff agrees, that uh, the best course here is to estimate what is actually being voted on and not what might happen after it takes effect. Uh, and I think that Jeff's argument about the um, safe harbor disclaimer is another way in which this is conservative, because there are things that will happen after January 1 of 2020 if this charter is adopted. A manager will take office. A manager may decide to retain one or more of the existing deputies. They, they may decide to create an assistant manager position. They may decide to do any number of those things. But they're going to be starting out with almost $400,000 of house money when they do that. And that's the delta between what is happening now and what will be the 
managerial and elected official payroll uh, in effect on, on January 1. So there's a, a margin for error here that keeps the taxpayers ahead of the game uh, even after January 1, 2020. Well, if I might. Oh, sure. Uh, and uh, Give him a microphone. The, the, the most um, important statement, I think, uh, in here, Jeff, is, is, and I'm pleased that you put it in and, and that Gordon shares the view, is that the, the first um, bullet the above is based strictly on the provisions of the proposed charter, charter that give rise to cost and savings differences from the current charter. So you've got documents that you set by, side by side. Um, and the, these numbers are familiar, um, generally speaking, because they were revised from the, the June 26th uh, uh, presentation, uh, which you gave us some options and then obviously settled on, on, on these. Um, so when I, when I look at the proposed charter, um, I, I do find the elimination of four commissioners and their corresponding salaries. Um, and I do find uh, an increase in the mayor's salary. Um, what I don't find is the reduction of five full-time deputies with benefits. Now, we could have said that. We could have said, in this charter, the position of deputies will be eliminated. And, I'm sorry? Was there a question? I, we, I mean, we could have said that overtly, in which case those in the accounting field would say, strictly on the provisions of the proposed charter, I need to remove the salaries and benefits of those people who now occupy those positions because we have said that all positions effective on the, 20, on the 31st of December of, 19, of 2019 will also be here on the first day of January 2020. So the charter does not compel, the new charter does not compel the reduction or removal of those provisions. That is for some future person who we don't know that we need to speculate on that person's decisions on how to organize the government. But, so return to my point, if you would. Would it have assisted you, Jeff, if we had said in the charter, the deputies will no longer be a part of the government, and based upon that statement, I have included a reduction of $568,000? Yeah, it's an argument, Matt, about explicit versus implicit. If you look at the current charter, it clearly calls out for deputy positions. The current charter. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. There are deputy positions in the uh, current charter. Current existing char the existing oh, charter. Sorry, in the existing that. charter, it calls for deputy positions. Fair enough. There, it is not called out for at all in the proposed. That's, I call that an implicit assumption as opposed to an explicit. Now, would it have helped? Yes, sir, it would have helped. Okay. And I, and I see your point. But, uh, <laughs> but on the other hand, I, it, I'm not bothered by this. Because if I, if I just came from Pluto and I read the new charter, I wouldn't see any deputies. The, uh, uh, and that, and that's, that was the rationale for concluding our failure to include a position in the current charter. Now, we didn't do that with a great many other positions, fair enough, that are in the current charter but not in the proposed charter. I think almost all the, part, the positions in the current charter are, are required by, by state law. Um, no, narrower question. Yeah. Just okay. From the existing charter to the new charter, we didn't call out all of yes. those same positions. So the implicit assessment would be the same for those, would it not? Or would there be a different test for, in other words, if it's not in the new charter but was in the old? That's yes, think the right. test that you're saying. Right. And I'm going to have to go back and look. Commissioners are called out. Deputies are called out in the current charter, right? I, I'm going to have to. Uh, yeah, they, to are. Yeah, they, they are. are. They are. Okay. okay. So let's, let's just say, but there are others, a number right. of other positions called out in the current charter that are not in the new charter. Right. But, you know, Matt, I don't. So, okay. for, forgive me if I misunderstood. Our, I don't mean misunderstood. <laughs> but in our, in our earnestness to create a, a, a viable document, I don't think it was incumbent of us at any point in time to say we need to explicitly identify position changes in the language of the new, of the new proposal. We said we were going to create a good document. And then we stood up. This is like saying Mr. Smith's bakery has got a blueberry, apple, 
and lemon pie in the window, and Mr. Jones's bakery has just apple and blueberry. This just it says lemon is missing. Okay, that's really all this says. It, the in the absence of that number, the five hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars, the proposed new charter would cost. I can't do arithmetic. Lawyers can't do arithmetic. That's right. part of why you right. go to law school. Oh, sorry. You, you, <laughs> One hundred and seventy thousand uh, uh, dollars to the bad, right? Okay. And we would cost more. So the juice is all real here in the elimination of the deputies, five hundred and sixty-eight thousand yeah. dollars. And all I'm saying is that if there are, if those positions are in the current tar uh, charter, the deputies, and and um, uh, and we don't say anything about in the new charter, wouldn't that same rationale apply? Because the implicit. Uh, uh, conclusion. Mm. Wouldn't that apply for all of the other positions that are in the current charter and not in the new one? Wouldn't we eliminate then the administrator of planning and economic development, the director of so and so and so and going on? Mr. Chairman, wouldn't that, wouldn't that be the same? I don't, I don't think so because oh. we made explicit provision for the protection of all civil service uh, protected positions, of which those the one you just mentioned is one. The deputy commissioners are not, but. May I also mention that my understanding always was that the deputy commissioners serve purely at the pleasure of the commissioners. Yeah. And certainly when the commissioners are gone, it was my understanding is that, well, you know, what is, what is their authority to be there the at all? Right, right. So there wouldn't be, in my judgment was that there would be no deputies. Now, it may help if we can do anything we can to mention in the new charter that the deputy commissioners are not there. No, but I disagree. that was my. We're going to have to do that. Uh, we're going to have to go back and revisit the entire document and start regrafting it. Well, I, I, I don't know, but certainly my understanding was, as a commission member here, my under, as a as a as a member of this commission, my understanding was that since the commissioners would not be there, neither would be the people who serve at their pleasures. I mean, they, it's, it's it's entirely their authority that has the deputy commissioners on the payroll. Matt, so let me ask you this. I don't think they exist. Are there any other positions, Matt, that are non-civil service that, you're, that you wanted to mention? I, according there's, one, there's, there's, there's one that I'm aware of, and we have explicitly changed. We have a, a Is that the clerk? Uh, no, it's the uh, risk and safety manager. That's not, that's not civil service? I don't believe it's civil service, but we, there's, there's language in there to be clear that that position will continue as well. Um, I, I, what Elio has explained to us, everybody who works in City Hall is subject to civil service law. There are exempt positions right. and, and, and otherwise. But, but um, so let me try to answer that question by, by answering Gordon's. Gordon's, I think the reference, the language you're referencing is continuation of existing departments. For those who are reading along, it's 4.01. Continuation of existing departments. As of the effective date of this charter, all existing departments, offices, and agencies shall continue unless and until modified by the city manager. I'm, um, so, I, so I'm not sure that that, that uh, only applies to civil service members um, at, at a certain level, that seems to me the universe of, of, of the city employees. You agree or disagree? Disagree. Okay. Mr. Chairman? All oh, go ahead. Who oh, would they be the deputies to, Matt? I mean, by eliminating the commissioner and they're the deputy commissioners, sure. they, and having them explicitly in the charter, that exists and having them absent from the new charter. Right. I, I, I don't know. Um, but what I'm saying, Barb, would it, would it be fair if the, the premise of this fiscal statement as the above is based strictly on the provisions of the proposed charter, and that charter said we will eliminate the deputies, those two things I believe would be married and very plain um, to, to members who are going to vote on this. In the absence of that, and given the continuation language, I believe, as I think Jeff believes, that for January of 2020, the deputies will be here and employed. They may be here until February, at which at some point, well, whatever the number is, the 50,000 or whatever, they will be gone. 
That's, that's a good point, Matt. But don't forget, this does say estimated future annual savings. It's not talking about 2020. No quibble on that. Yeah, no okay, okay. I just, just okay, so we're clear. Sorry, so Ann has, has a point. Uh, I'm not sure that that's entirely true. In the transition language, we did say that the uh, transition task force is to reallocate special, uh, the specific duties of the commissioners and the deputy commissioners to new and existing, new or existing positions. Um, and then continues to say that while the existing deputy commissioners or their designees shall continue to serve in their departmental uh, functions, it is only until the city manager is appointed, at which time they serve at the pleasure of the city manager. So I think it's clearly implied here. That last clause, though, can, only until? They serve in their departmental functions until the city manager's appointment is effective, at which time they shall serve at the pleasure of the city manager. The implication being... I think between the transition language and the appointment of the city manager, the intention is that the, the job functions will continue, but the jobs themselves may not. And the not. city manager is intended to, the transition, the transition task force is to establish a work plan to figure out how to do this. And the city manager is likely to need some assistance for some period of time, which I think is what you're getting at. But in reallocating jobs and flattening the corporate structure, I think the positions themselves are intended to be eliminated, and I think we've implied that pretty clearly in the language about the deputy uh, commissioners in the transition language. Intended to be eliminated, but subject to the, the decision of the city manager, uh, which is what I think yeah. you just read. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. They serve at the uh, pleasure uh, of the city manager, yes. Or not at all. Or, or, or not, not at all. Um, and I'm under no illusion that there are any persuadable votes here. So, uh, so don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, th this jury has sent We're my client neighbors, to the man. electric chair change. four times over. I'd like to think that we have, we are, I would phrase it as that we are saving the taxpayers over a half a million dollars by cutting out the middle management. But Yes, and, and uh, if we said that, if we said the deputy commissioner's mm -hmm. positions were going to be eliminated, I think one would have a much more credible case uh, to those who were evaluating this fiscal statement uh, and saying those positions are gone. What we hope, what the majority hopes and believes is that the city manager will make that decision in the year 2020, a person who we don't know, have never met, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll come in and make, and make that call. I just, I just think of those, that fork in the road, one would have said, clearly they're gone. The other said, we hope and expect the city manager will make that decision. Well, we have also said that the, the transition task force, which perhaps might even include some of us, um, is intended Hopefully to not. reallocate the specific, oh no, you're right, yeah. not a soul here is going to, never mind. Yeah, no. um, the reallocation of the specific duties of each commissioner to new or existing positions. So it may, it will be up to the transition task force, force presumably to create the org structure, which will then be filled by the chair, the new city manager. I would, I, I, I that's my take on it. And I think the implication of those two sections is that that's how this is supposed to play out. My, my uh, uh, you know, clear sense from the language that we've drafted into this document is that we're give, we've given the, at every turn where we had a choice of locking something in for the future or giving the choice to the newly elected officials or the manager that they retain, we have given them the responsibility for doing that. And implicitly, we've given the voters the responsibility for electing people in 2019, should this be approved, that will pick the people that they want to make happen what they want to make happen. And if they decide, hey, look, we've got three knowledgeable deputy commissioners here, and we don't want to lose their talent, all this stuff, we're going to hire a manager, we're going to make sure that these positions go into the 2020 budget, okay, they can do that. There's nothing stopping them from doing that. No, they might call the positions by some different name because they wouldn't be a deputy commissioner because there's no commissioner to be a deputy to. But they, they could do that. The manager could ask for it. The council could require it uh, or at least authorize it in the budget. So there's, it, we've given discretion, okay? And, the, and, the discre and, and to, ask, to answer your, maybe your last uh, iteration of your question is we didn't say anywhere in the charter that 
a certain position is being abolished, except for implicitly the elected commissioners and, and the deputies. And it's implicit because we're creating positions. We're creating council positions, a mayor position, which is a whole different office from what the mayor is now. So in a sense, yeah, the mayor's position is getting raised, but the mayor's job is totally different. And, and we're creating a city manager. So we're, we don't say in this document that we're uncreating uh, anything because it's the discretion of those elected and appointed officials to decide what they want to create. And, and when you read the words, the above is based on strictly on the provisions of the proposed charter. Yeah. It's a hope and expectation, is it not? No, it's a it's a it's a discretion that the it's a discretion it's a discretion that the that the that we've handed to the future, okay, right. uh, the future appointed and elected officials to make their decision, but they don't have to carry on the expense the and the salaries and the benefits of positions that are designated in the existing charter because that charter is repealed by enactment of this charter. And we elected so not we to say we elected not to say. That the, the positions of deputy commissioners are eliminated uh, so as to result in a $568,000. We elected not to say that. I don't even think we say that the uh, elected commissioners are, are eliminated. No, we don't, no, we're no, silent no. on that too. I think it's implied uh, because it's well, changed, maybe, because all we did was create. We didn't eliminate it. We, we started with this void, and on the first day, there was heaven and earth, you know? Right. And on about the 800th day, we created this charter. <laughs> so. Um, well, what in if, fact, what if we, we did got, repeal well, the 2001 charter. We repealed right. the whole thing. Right. Yeah. That's on page, uh, what page number is this? Mm -hmm. Well, is what right? is it? You know, it seems to me that, um, that does it, does it? you know, uh, the, the lawyer, the lawyer, yeah, lawyer Jones saying. may have a, his interpretation of the word. It may be seems strictly is the, is the sticking point. Um, uh, and perhaps striking that word is the above is based on a reasonable, uh, reasonable <laughs> expectation. I don't know. You're, um, perhaps one of the lawyers could give me a word with. Um, I'm sorry. I don't see those positions in the new charter. Why should I assume anything? What reasonable that. expectation should I have? We shouldn't. We shouldn't I think let's, I, we shouldn't assume that they exist if they're not provided for. And if okay. they're not provided for in the charter, then... And look, folks, we've been at this for 18 months, and we never talked about explicitly saying in, in the new charter that we were eliminating X, Y, and Z from the old one. But you're repealing it. We do say we repeal it in its totality in Section 8.01. So we did repeal and so replace? We repeal, we, we, yes. <laughs> yes. yes, we repealed and we replaced. Good. Just checking. <laughs> Just making sure. I, right. and we I do think have that's that pretty, that's pretty the bottom. crystal, isn't it? Right. Um, uh, the above are, are strictly estimates and are not guarantees of savings. I think Matt has demonstrated that he has very little to do on weeknights, and um, <laughs> I appreciate the cleverness with which he has uh, uh, raised this, uh, this issue, but I'd like to call a question. We all need a hobby. <laughs> um, all right, so all in favor of um, adopting the... Uh, revise uh, uh, fiscal language with the changes that were suggested to Jeff? In the financial numbers section. Yeah. Yes, in terms of how that was. Sure. Uh, let me see a second. All right, so I'm sorry, who moved the motion? Uh, Jeff moved, I seconded. Oh, okay. We've amended it. He's accepted friendly amendments to right. the text, to right. the numbers. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Can um, I just say something that really um, doesn't strictly pertain to that, but in the discussion there was a mention of the fact that there might be a full-time attorney. There is no language in the charter. And I just want to say this for the public that calls for a full-time city attorney. There is mention of a city attorney. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says that that position is full-time. Correct. Nor mm -hmm. is the mayor's position called full-time. Mm -hmm. So just for the public information. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I also think it goes with the, the Commission's view that, uh, by and large, this, the sort of substantive policy and political decisions should be made by our elected officials rather than the Charter Commission itself. Um, I will also note, uh, for the record, that our esteemed colleague does have a very impressive hobby of uh, running half marathons. And uh, kudos to Mr. Jones for running the Paleo Half Marathon. Would you, would you care to share your time? Uh, 155. 155. You beat the two minutes. That is excellent. We commend you. And uh, I, I, for one, uh, look forward even more excited to your, your uh, tackling of the full marathon. Um, and we will celebrate that at, the, at our subsequent Charter Review meeting. That would be great. Uh, uh, so, uh, so at this point, uh, we have uh, the cover sheet, the fiscal impact statement, and the charter that will go out uh, to uh, all voters. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the how that mailing is going to work, Pat? Uh, yes, actually, we've been uh, pursuing a variety of different places. We've uh, we'd like to do all of it locally and work through a sheltered workshop to do the mailings, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, trying to be as cost effective as possible. Um, we're instead of sending it to every registered voter, we're going to send it to every household, assuming that we can save about uh, fifty percent of the mailings. And because we're going to try to keep it streamlined and, and effective. So uh, we'll get that. We'd like to get it out by the first week in October, first full week in October. Uh, it's not hard. Once we have these documents, we've had uh, pricing. We're getting some more pricing tomorrow. But we should be able to get this out fairly quickly. So as soon as we get the official official, I'll get it to the printers, and, and off we go. So I expect to save quite a bit of money by looking at our, our uh, routes a little bit more effectively. I have a question. Um, a lot of the younger voters prefer online copies sure. and don't like the mail copies. Is there a way we can reach? <clears throat> Opt out type thing? Um, yeah, okay. or, or have some of the younger folks like at Skidmore College, for example, yeah. which is um, a bunch of people. Um, well, you know, ironically, in the way the, the records, we, we don't know their room numbers, so they'll, they'll get a stack. So maybe what we'll do is extract, is that what you're saying? Extract right. all the Skidmore? Yeah. And put them in a central location, a smaller number? Yes. Okay, we can take care of that. The, and the cover, the cover letter does mention the website, so if they want to use the paper for, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, then they can go to the web and... And all yeah. these documents will be posted on the web, the cover letter, everything. Everything will yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. be done. Um, and I do try and make a point of uh, saying in all the, the newsletters uh, that voters can read the, the full charter on the website. Uh, Gordon just raised a point. I just want to say that uh, the mailing will also include a, a summary document of the charter that was approved at the last, uh, that was approved at the last meeting. Uh, so I guess the only sort of final thing, is there any... Um, uh, I had sort of discussion of public education efforts. Um, you know, we're pretty excited about, number one, the amount of meet the uh, manager nights that we have out there, but also the number of managers that are coming. Mm -hmm. We're going to see, we, we, right now we have uh, invitations out to five mayors and their ma manager to come. I'd like to think we can get at least two of the five to come here, so you'll be able to talk to a mayor with their city manager sitting right next to them so that someone could ask questions of that and understand what the, you know, because that's, that's all new for all of us. But all events will be widely publicized. All events will be, we believe, live stream from the library. We'll push that out there so quite a few people will be able to experience it. We'll also record them so that we can put them out on the website as early as October 5th, because the first one is October 2nd. Tony, you don't have to do it, but if you want to come, you can videotape it but um, the idea is that we really want people to see this as I said a lot of house uh, house parties uh, Bob spoke at one yeah I say I keep calling them house parties but events you were at a church yesterday and you were at a community center yesterday um, and, and a, a lot of people have served and, and I know you guys have done a few too um, but if you see any other organizations that want if you happen to be a member of the Lions Club or the Rotary Club and they're looking for that um, we're happy to send people out to as, as many places as possible I believe um, Ann and Matt are going to be talking to the City Democratic Committee on Saturday morning. No, yes. I am. Oh, Barb is. Oh, okay. But not this Saturday. 
Yeah. Now, yeah, this upcoming, yeah, the, the next Saturday. Yeah. Right, the 23rd. 23rd. Yeah, oh, yeah. This Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the 23rd is Sunday, I think. Saturday. 23rd Saturday, yeah. We're, you know, just look, you know, it's, it's, it's basically trying to get, you know, people to go to the website, download it, look at it, read it, understand it, and we'll probably augment as many of these things as we can with some kind of video. We've talked about videotaping Jeff's financial. Uh, he's got a, what is now about 75 minutes. We want to cut him down to about seven. <laughs> it's more like three hours. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, we're trying to create maybe a small YouTube, some of the topics that might be harder for people to understand, that people want some more time with. We'll, we'll videotape them and put them on the website so that you, know, you can give us the financial impact and so forth. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. I may be out of order because I wasn't here at the last time. So if this is not appropriate, I will just keep quiet. Mm -hmm. About the highlights of this or of the, that we approved, mm -hmm. that the commission approved, there's couple of places where there's language in there that may sound to some people as being advocacy rather than information. So I wanted an opportunity to review that so that there are no phrases or hints in the, in the, in the, in the highlights that is, 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 can, can be construed that way. Mm -hmm. So I, didn't, I don't know since it's already been approved, I don't know what the procedure is or whether there is a way to have that reviewed again, because I do have some comments about it. Okay, well, so I, I was just wondering, uh, I, and I don't want to take the time of the commission right now to bring it all out, but uh, if you want to, I will. Well, well, yeah. Sure. It's, it's late already, so if we waited any longer, it would be even later. Okay, well, uh, in the... <clears throat> In the justification section, if you have that in front of you, mm -hmm. there's a statement that says, potential difficulties of commissioner-headed departments not working effectively together will be eliminated by the unification of an administration. So this is like saying, uh, this is like making a statement about a dysfunction that today exists. And I don't think we need to say that. I don't think there's any reason to invoke such, a, such an argument. Uh, we could easily say that the administration of the city will be unified under the manager and not say all of that about the criticism of the existing charter. So I, I, mean, I, I just don't know if a statement like that is something that we really need to make in the, I think, mm -hmm. If you eliminate that, it would still give the information to the people about what it is we're proposing. That, that uh, statement was significantly improved with the help of Matt Jones at the meeting where we adopted that document. I wasn't, I'm sorry. Okay. Which, which document were we talking about? Th this is the highlights. The, the, the summary document. The summary document. The summary of the proposed charter. I think that the word, the word potential was uh, uh, a discussion point, I, and uh, that's how it got there, and that's where we ended up. Yeah. I, I, ju I just wanted to make sure that there are no issues out there for criticisms about what it is we're sending out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any issues with the wording myself, but. Okay, I mean, that's fine with me. It as doesn't long appear as like you're advocating it. it. I think it indicates some of the research that we found, obviously. Mm -hmm. Is it, were there any other um, things that perhaps you thought might? Well, uh, yeah, the, 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 there's another one that says, um, which has to do with the audit of the finance department, which says the existing charter provides for audits conducted by the finance department, but that department is not able to independently audit itself. And that's okay, if you, if you consider that as a commission, that that's just a true statement, that we, that's fine with me then. You can't, I just yeah. wanted to point I, that, it out. I would say that's it true. Is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would, Jeff, you're the expert in this area. If, if the commissioner of accounts hired an outside, well, there's no more big eight accounting firms or whatever, whatever right. their successors are, um, would, would that constitute an independent audit for that department? First of all, in, 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 independent 
Are you saying, you said a Department of Accounts, Matt, is what you said? Finance. You meant finance? So if the commissioner, just so I have clear, I understand this. You're saying if the commissioner of finance brought in an outside CPA firm and had them do a limited scope audit of some section of the, of the operations sure. and ask for a, a, an opinion on that, sure. um, let me just put it this way. That would, be a lot, that would be a lot further along the continuum than what we are able to, to accommodate today. But, but frankly, uh, that still doesn't get us to the fact that we need an uh, independent oversight group. We were talking about finance committee with a reporting relate with a. That would be a very very expensive way to, to address the issue of independence. Right. Okay. Uh, I was trying to square that with the statement. That's all. It's, yeah. Um, but it really can't. No, I would. I would still say I can't give an independent. It, it can't independently audit itself. Unless the relationship was to the city council. Right, right, right. So unless the city got, right, yeah, right, right. So it's because it's not auditing itself; it's bringing somebody, it's bringing an independent third party into into the into the scenario. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I really do not have an objection to this highlights the way it is. I just wanted to point these things out so everybody hears them. And if you wanted to go with the highlights the way they have been approved, it's okay with me. Okay. Thank you. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't I believe I have any other measures. Any, or anything, is there anything else anyone wants to discuss? The, um, the political deputies, I think. The political deputies. What about the political deputies? But, um, uh, the, the, the objection I raised here over the weekend about, about that characterization of the, the deputies and so forth. Mm -hmm. Could I? Yeah, sure, sure. It? And it's good uh, civics lessons for the, for the uh, students in here. I, um, I spoke with Bob this weekend. Um, uh, he and I have a disagreement over uh, the use of the term political deputies, um, which uh, first uh, I heard um, on the, um, the night that we voted uh, the 26th of June, um, uh, and uh, Bob characterized the deputy commissioners as political deputies. Um, I, I made the point at that meeting, as I, as I will now, um, I think uh, that term is um, uh, misdescribes uh, what the deputies do. I think it's a, a pejorative term. It uh, demeans the, uh, the, the uh, positions. And I don't <coughs> think, in fact, um, the deputy commissioners who serve either now or in the past, and in fairness, Bob wasn't clear, and maybe he cleared up at this point, whether he was referring to uh, the political deputies then and in subsequent news accounts, is he referring to the current deputies or the ones in the past? I was assuming it was a generic, we're not pointing this yeah. person over here. So I, I, that's the way I understood it. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I, uh, uh, freedom of speech, as Jeff aptly pointed out in a, in a recent email, is part of what we're about. Diverse opinion, dissenting opinion, is what has made the, the commission stronger. So I'm, I'm, I'm all with you there. Uh, Bob does occupy the only chair that speaks for all of us. And so when he speaks about what's in the charter, the seven people who are going to constitute the, the, the new government, uh, the city manager, and speaks, in fact, about the proposed charter, I'm with him. I'm, I'm even, because I'm a strong believer in leadership, that any reasonable inferences that can be drawn from that document, um, uh, the argument is it's going to save us money. Uh, it's going to be more cost effective. It's going to encourage people to come. While I disagree with those, I think that's a reasonable inference that can be drawn from, uh, from our discussions. Um, but, but I don't think it's fair comment for uh, the chair uh, to saddle the commission with the term uh, political uh, comment. And I, so I don't want to misquote him. I want to quote him I exactly. Um, Bob said it's, it's uh, at, at the June 26th meeting, it's worth the sort of thinking about the political deputies that we have versus the city manager. Again, a city manager has five years of experience and has extensive professional training and certification in here, right? A political deputy has no experience requirement. There's no course requirements. One is hired on the basis of professional competence. One is hired on political loyalty. One is unable to perform political duties, city manager, uh, campaign contributions that get involved, and the other, again, the political deputies, as Elio often points out, typically they were either city, uh, they were either candidates uh, or the candidate's campaign staff, and they were forced to become 
uh, the candidate's political staff and where I have the biggest problem. We, in essence, are in the position as taxpayers. We're forced to sort of subsidize, subsidize paying for, like, political hacks for a lot of these people to be running their campaigns and to be hosting their fundraisers during the season. And I don't like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to pay for that. I don't think taxpayers want to pay for that as well. Um, and the reason I quoted that, because I wanted to be as accurate as possible and, and, to, and to share my, my disagreement with that, is that um, I, I don't think that's a fair characterization of what the deputies that I know or, and, and have known uh, do. I, I think um, they do serve a political function, giving political advice to the legislative portion of, of uh, the, uh, uh, the commissioners and what they do. They are also the administrative heads of the five departments in, in which they run. And a, a, as a result of that, to, to characterize them in a campaign as political deputies, I think demeans them in a way which is un, unfair to them. Um, so I, I would want the commission to disassociate itself from the use of the term uh, political deputies and by its adoption of a resolution, encourage Bob to not continue that use in the campaign to, uh, to adopt the charter. And he and I have a disagreement on that, which I've shared with him, as I said, uh, offline, uh, so as not to surprise anybody. But that's how I feel about the issue, and I, and I, would, I would ask him to, his view on it. Uh, excuse me, Matt. You mean speaking as an advocate in the future, is that what you're referring to? Or you're saying, or as a representative, or speaking for this body? When, when uh, Bob has been quoted in the press, uh, as, as similar to what he said. Is that a press release, by the way? Is that, a, is that, a, is that a, an article that what, you what just... What I just read to you were Bob's words. From an article or from one of our June sessions? June 26th meeting. Meeting here? Yes, uh, upstairs. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. And, and, okay. and subsequently, Bob refers in news articles to the political deputies, and by removing them, it will be a, a tremendous cost savings, which we've just discussed. Right. And so... Um, I think, you know, when I have, I think as we have been, uh, you know, discussing this issue and the thing that, you know, that Ilio has, has raised, um, and in looking at current and past uh, deputies, um, I think the observation that they are uh, very involved in their, uh, the commissioner's campaigns is, is fairly factually accurate. I think there's a sort of, uh, there's a, an interesting discussion on the, on the, on the, the way that that causality goes. Um, some people have said that uh, you're the, you're, you run the campaign and then you get the job. Some people say you have the job and then you're, you're forced to run the, sure. the, the campaign. Um, and I do think that really one of the you know, the most significant changes that would happen from this form of government to a different form of government is the removal of political considerations from the day-to-day -day operations of the, uh, of the offices, the delivery of services. And we have heard stories of how, um, you know, previous commissioners have used their administrative powers against their their political deputies. And again, I, I mean, I'm sorry, against their their political opponents. And they, and again, I don't want to call anyone out. Um, you know, I think I was just talking about this with Lou Benton and um, at a at a forum the other day, and he was sort of referring to it as as colorful colorful characters. Um, so I, I think what I will try to do is when I speak is I will refer to them as the deputy commissioners. But I will say that they are, um, they are political appointees. They are political appointees. Um, and even, you know, when listening to, um, at a, you know, a previous uh, success meeting, we were, they, a commissioner was there, and they were talking, mm -hmm. you know, what this person said was that, you know, one of the most important things they did was constituent service. And so when I, when I worked on Capitol Hill, I did constituent service. And it, and it was political. Um, so I don't think that that... That distinction again. It's and, and they do have a they do have a weird hybrid role, um, and I just think the removal of that 
the political part is what distinguishes the current system from the old system. And I think that's fair. Um, if, if you would be willing to do that, to just refer to them as deputy commissioners, because the, the, the one fact we can all agree on here is that the only information we have about deputy commissioners is anecdotal. Uh, we I, I, I agree, Matt. If I could just butt in for a second. I categorically agree with you. Let's not kid ourselves. Political anything is pejorative, okay? And to refer any any time we're representing this council or this commission, anything we say publicly, that kind of language needs to be avoided. If Bob wants to go and stand on the, the, the corner of Lake and, and, and Broadway, okay, and proclaim that, you know, we're in a political miasma, you know, more power to him, okay? He's speaking for Bob Turner. But we do have to be careful. I happen to know a deputy who was not appointed for political reasons. You don't know what's in the heart or the mind of the appointer, okay? And so, yeah, there are a lot of anecdotal, there's a lot of anecdotal, I hate broad brush, brushing stuff. Personally, I don't, I find that difficult. And I, you know my feelings, I'm very much in favor of this. I mean, outside this office, or outside this, these meetings, but I do think we had that, we, we had that obligation of decorum, objectivity, and clarity, and to avoid the pejorative. I apologize to you, Bob, but I do, I do agree with you on that, Matt. I speak? Yeah, sure. uh, I think you raise a, an interesting point, but I, 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 as a, uh, I worked for 13 years for the Speaker of the Assembly. I was a political appointee. I worked for 13 years, always that somebody could say, you know, you're not, you're not going to be here after the next two weeks or even tomorrow. So I've, I've, I've been in that environment, and I admire anybody that takes on a political appointment like a deputy commissionership here in Saratoga Springs because they serve at the pleasure of an elected official. And a good part of their awareness of their job responsibilities has to do with uh, making sure that that elected official does not suffer negative political consequences from anything that the full-time deputy undertakes. So it's a, it's a fairly pressure-packed environment, and it is a byproduct of having elected officials in charge of administrative departments. And so I, I, don't, I, I, I take your point, but I think that the, the idea that, that calling somebody a political appointee or a political deputy as being disparaging to me doesn't necessarily, uh, it isn't disparaging to me, because um, not only because I have also held a political appointment, but because I think it's really in the eyes of the beholder. And, and our uh, political sensibilities have been so uh, slapped around over the last uh, 20 or 30 years that anybody that holds a, a, a discretionary position that is in the discretion of an elected official to, to give is automatically looked at as a flunky of some kind. Now, Elio, more than a couple of times, used the word ward healers uh, to describe the roles of the deputies in this government. And I thought that was a little severe because I think they are more than that. They're more than just campaign uh, supporters. They are, um, we have a former deputy mayor here in the audience tonight. Uh, they are people who look out for the best interest of the city with the best interest of their elected boss in mind. And it is a, a much more pressurized environment than uh, most of us have ever uh, taken part in. So I, I don't consider it a disparagement to say that somebody was a political deputy. I think it is wrong to disparage the political aspect of appointments because it's part of the, the way we do business in this country. Um, the cabinet is a, in, in Washington is a, they're all political appointments, so is the cabinet in Albany. Uh, the Charter Review Commission. Go ahead. We are, no, but we're, we're not, not paid. We're so not, no, I actually think it's. I think it's very, actually, very distinct. So when I was also a political appointee, and I, you know, again, I served at the pleasure. Um, the city council cannot remove any of us uh, from the charter review commission. We're we're an independent body, uh, and so again, I think that's a that's a significant difference. And there's and there's there's no remuneration. <laughs> there's psychic wealth. <laughs> Right. There's, um, yes, there's, there's, there's psychic. There's none wealth. of that. I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> so, again, I, I, I'm fine with calling them a deputy, commis uh, uh, deputy commissioners, but they are, I do think they are political appointees. Absolutely. No are. argument. Absolutely. So. Yep. Thank you for that. Um, so, 
I believe uh, that um, some of our uh, work tonight may come up at a meeting of the City Council. I just wanted to let you all know, I believe that um, one of the commissioners may be sort of discussing about whether these materials um, should be uh, funded by the City Council. The money has already been authorized. This has been an issue um, in the, in a, uh, the 2006 uh, charter review process. Um, I'm not sure, Tony, do you want to do you want to talk a little bit about that? I can weigh in on what happened this morning at the pre-agenda council meeting. It was, and of course you can, I believe it's able to, you can, you can watch a recording of it if you want to. Uh, so this is something that happened at a public meeting. Uh, there was some discussion about uh, a, a, the materials that are going to be sent out by this commission and whether or not it would be appropriate for this commission to discuss with the council before the items are sent out whether or not the language in those documents constitutes education or advocacy. Uh, this commission does not have a strict obligation certainly to do so. It is up to the commission to decide whether it sees that type of discussion with the council as a good idea. Uh, it's up to you to do what you think is best. But uh, I believe the matter will be raised at the council meeting tomorrow night. Yeah, Tony. Uh the, the, in addition to us not having the obligation to do it, would you not agree from the uh, municipal home rule law that the council has no power to uh, rule on whether uh, anything that we uh, do with this mailing uh, is objectionable to them on any, on any basis? Well, the, the advocacy versus education issue remains. Uh, if somebody wants to challenge something that you do or send out or say, arguing that it is advocacy rather than education and and public funds have paid for it right. in some way, shape, or form, because that is a critical element. Right. Uh, if somebody wants to argue that, they they are able to argue that about anything that you do. Right. Let's face it. Uh, the, uh, the, the question that was raised this morning was, should there be some discussion before this commission sends anything out uh, so that the council has a chance to take a look at what is being sent out before and you can agree as to whether or not it's advocacy or education. I believe in 2006 the issue didn't uh, really come to a head until after the mailing had gone out, in yes. fact after yes. the election, and then it was a question of whether the city would pay for right. the thing that this uh, the commission had already Correct. sent out. And, yeah. uh, I, I think that until the, the, the mailing is sent out, uh, we haven't sent it out. Right. And uh, if someone, a taxpayer, receives it, then they might legitimately question whether, yeah. uh, you know, taxpayer funds were expended improperly based upon what they see when they open the envelope. If, um, yeah, and, and the question was just raised today by, uh, by at least one council member. I don't know how many joined in, in the discussion on the point, but at least one council member raised the issue, well, should we look over these materials with members of the charter? Oh, yeah. before they are sent out. Uh, I will leave it to you to determine the, the practicality of such a suggestion. Question, Mr. Iso. I'm wondering whether as our, our esteemed uh, legal uh, advisor, you could maybe look at our material and give us your opinion on what you think, whether these are advocacy or not. Uh, you have chosen to use me in a variety of ways if you, and, and not use me in other ways. If you choose to use me for that, I'm very happy to do that for you. Okay. I, so I, I, I would ask my commission members whether we want to seek Mr. Izo's opinion about the materials. I think that we've here. made our own judgment on what's in these materials. This is about as objective and clean of uh, any advocacy as, as we can make them. Uh, I think that Tony, in an arguable sense, uh, you know, works for the city council as, and he's advising us. So right. I think that uh, he's been involved in the uh, meetings at which all of these documents were created. Um, I don't think further review is, uh, is, is warranted. When are they going out there? When are you going to mail them out? First of all, first part of Can we take a vote on what Gordon just said? Can somebody put that in the form of a motion? I mean, if there's a question on the table here. We're discussing whether or not we should have some kind of uh, review pre-mailing review, and there's some of us who feel strongly that that's not necessary and others who think it might be. I'd like to put that to a vote. Is there any, does any I, just, I don't want to, I want to hear some more discussion if people. I think we've all painstakingly reviewed this with that same, I, same keen eye, and I, I think we cross over to an area that really 
is going to just cause more trouble than it's worth. I, I, I feel we've reviewed that effectively with the best intentions, and we're going to get into another set of issues as to uh, proverbial censorship, which has no bearing whatsoever on all of this. Our documents, I believe, are very clear and concise, and by law, we're, we're allowed to put out the documents that we feel are clean and clear, and we should let them roll because... I'm comfortable being on the hot seat on this, yeah. along with all of my colleagues on the commission. I don't think it's fair to put Tony on the hot seat, ruling for or against something that we've written up, and whether it's going to please certain members of the city council. I think that's it way puts out him of in line. an untenable <laughs> position. Well, that wouldn't be the standard anyway. But um, I, I also think you know I, I w I've gone back. Um, Tony Tony Iso has a as an odd hobby that some of you may know of collecting countless years of charter review documents that we are all um, a beneficiary of. Mm -hmm. And I, I just know even, even looking at the 2006 mailing, that really, it, it looked like a campaign mailing. I mean, what we are sending out, uh, again, I was talking with a friend who is a you know, professional campaign manager, and uh, he was teasing me. He said, yeah, this is a sort of campaign material that only a, you know, a card-carrying professor, political scientist would put out. Um, you know, look, we're sending out like 25 pages of single-spaced text. Um, it's not easy. There's no images. There's no graphics. Um, no there's na there is nary an emoji. There's no chart. There's no big savings now. Three hundred and ninety-one thousand uh, dollars. You know, I think this is this is pretty dry to the point of being wallpaper paste, and. Um, you know, is uh, sufficiently dreary to qualify as educational material rather than advocacy. I may state for the record to avoid any misinterpretation, I did not advise the 2006 Chair of Commission. Yeah. <laughs> other, other, other than to set up, to set them up with their certificate and uh, procedurally to get them started, I did yeah. not advise the 06 Commission. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my mother would say you would catch more flies with. Um, Sugar than with vinegar or something like that. Yeah, Honey, very, that's uh, what that's yeah. what my mother yeah, would say. Do you do you all know my mother? Honey than vinegar. Yeah. Yes. Um, that said, is there some reason why, as a courtesy, we couldn't send to the the city council a copy of what we intend to supply to all of the voters and say this is for your recommendation or your review? We don't have yeah. to necessarily pay attention to what All of these they documents say. Are, are, have been posted or are about to be posted to of the course. website. Of and course. and uh, the, they, the charter text and um, the summary have already been sent to the city clerk. Well, that's it. Okay, as the representative of the city council uh, for circulation. And I believe the other members of the council were copied on that mailing. So they have received everything here ex with the sole exception of the fiscal memo that we approved tonight. Um, I think this is a big runaround. Uh, of course this is it not is. This, this is not a, a request that's being made in good faith. This is being made at the 11th hour and 59th minute and 59th second of the 59th minute to try to, you know, waylay the process here. And I don't understand why. How does it waylay the process if we simply send to the city council? Because it's, a, it's immediately accessible to any of them on the website. Of course it is. Well, but then, it's also then, accessible to all of our voters, too. Mm -hmm. By that argument, you could say we don't need to send it to the voters because they can all get it off the mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. If well, we send it to all the city council members first... We've, it, we've complied with a, a it was, not unreasonable request. And it request. was sent to the city council members like t uh, two weeks ago. But let's send it exactly the way they've asked no. for it. It's not That's, an unreasonable request. That is request. what well, that, I think has already been attention. done. We don't have to say anything. We don't, they can say we don't like this or don't no, send it. it and we can them. say thank you very much for but your I input think, um, and go and so send this it. Will be, this will be on the website. Uh, but I think the sort of the larger substantive uh, sort of legal and political issue, when you meet, read municipal home rule law uh, 30, 36, the, the key, the, the, the language and the, and the intent of that law is all to give the Charter Review Commission independence right. from the current political status quo. And I'm not and, suggesting for yeah. an instant that we well, won't be independent. We simply we, send it to them. They, re they no, made a reasonable request. It's no business of their, no, it isn't a reasonable request. Why is it's it unreasonable? A, because they have no legal authority over what we we're do. We're not giving them authority. We're well, just you said, and, and you said you're asking for their opinion. No, no, I'm not. Yes, you did. That's what you said. No, I didn't. So I you said, would just say, you, you, would just, you would just, Here it you is. would just submit it to them. Exactly. They asked for it. Just as an informational courtesy. Precisely. Yeah. Let's clarify that last point. Um, if there is advocacy 
in one of these documents, the council does have a legal role, do they not? No. And that is, and that is to deny uh, payment for that ag advocacy piece. Uh, that would not be for the council to eventually determine. It might end up uh, in the for good, bad, or indifferent, uh, being the mm -hmm. uh, pur uh, purview of a court. Well, 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 I uh, actually uh, believe it's the mayor. <laughs> in the first instance, the controversy would arise if the council refused to pay an invoice on the grounds that it was advocacy. Uh, would the council have the opportunity to say, aha, paragraph four, third sentence right there, that's advocacy, sure. and we're not going to pay for this? And, and, yeah. so, and so the controversy that's, would arise. That's prior restraint, though, and they don't have the right to do that. All not that, under the municipal home rule law. All that I think Ann is suggesting, and I would, if there is something in there that is legally objectionable, I would want to know about it. I haven't seen anything, in my own opinion, but, but if, if, um, Someone has a claim. I would like to hear what it says, including our own counsel. And um, uh, well, I've known this good-looking guy here for, for a long, long time. Amen. He's in an untenable position of advising two clients. Let's just send it down to our lawyer, um, uh, Bob Bassett, and ask him for an opinion, and you know, uh, and go on with it. Right? Uh, Matt, you know, I, would, I, I, I would. know everybody's trying to. You know, the various forces is here that are trying to uh, waylay this process. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate all the tricks that are being played here. But uh, this document is the charter that is going on the ballot. The summary and the fiscal note are what is required by law. The city council, if the municipal home rule law means anything in this process, the city council has no uh, ability to uh, exercise prior restraint over the content of anything no, no, that we do no, well then there is no reason to yeah. ask them for their opinion if they're not going to exercise if they have no legal authority to exercise that prior restraint I agree they might have they they might have a uh, standing to not pay the bill but then they will have be in court and a judge will determine whether or not they were on good ground you object to us getting from our own lawyer? yes because who is our own lawyer He's not, he's no, this was not. He was not, he was not retained for this purpose. We only retained right. him for the, the drafting, and we have yeah. uh, used his time and services. And so it's a money issue. Um, not even that. I, would, I think it's principle. You know, I look well, at I it don't say, know that that's his. If, if there was qualified people on the city council that were different qualifications than what we have sitting around the table, I would say maybe somebody with a law degree might look at it. We have two attorneys here with us. I think we've all looked at this in a, with a keen eye, and I, I'm with Gordon. I think this is what we've put, put out there, and right. who's the determination of, of what's advocacy or not? That, that, again, goes back to the court issue. So I have, I have, heard, I have heard everything around the table here tonight, and I see what's going on in Saratoga Springs and what the environment is like, and I believe I would like to make a motion that we present to the city council what it is that we're going to send out as mailings and inform them that this is what we're sending out and give them a few days to get back to us if they have anything to say. Otherwise, I think it's a good courtesy. It's going to lower the temperature. It's going to allow them to look at anything they want, but it's our prerogative to send that out. But I, I make a motion that we send it out to them as for, just for their information. I'm confused. So if they're placing this request and all this information is available online, why doesn't one of them just print it off and review it? The, the, I mean, the, it, it, it seems to be ludicrous Mike, what the, we're going the, through the, right the, here. The, the, it's, all, the, it's all there. There's a, there. There's a motion on the table. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, my, Mike, in, in answer to that, I don't think we have ever compiled a document that says this is what you're going to send it out to, to voters. Right. This is what we're doing tonight. And all I'm saying in my motion is that we present that to the council is that for your information, this is what we intend to send out on October X. That's all. That's all I'm make, making as a motion. BK, I, I, I respect your, your opinion on this, but it was already done. We had to do that before the 60th day before the election. We had to deliver the, the charter document, the summary, uh, to the city clerk so that it could get on the ballot. That was already done, and it was copied to every member of the city council. That's so the only, there was the sole exception of the fiscal document. That's fine. I, so I have a question. 
If we put together all of these documents, we already have sent them the previous two, and t tonight we'll put up Jeff's, or within a day or two. Um, Tomorrow morning. We, we'll put up Jeff's financial disclosure summary. Can we then just let them know that the documents are available online? Sure. Is, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, th that's what they've asked for, right? They yeah. they want to see yeah. the documents. The documents they are available online. We'll tell them okay. this is the website address so, and. You, you have the discretion to do that. Yes. I, I would suggest that maybe idea. you might want to listen to the public meeting today. I'm trying to recall exactly what was said. I, I got the impression that they were suggesting that they might want to look at it before it's sent up. Yeah. And which, the, which again, if they go to the website, that, that, that's it's there. It should be it, as should all the other they, citizens of Saratoga Springs. Right. It is up to this commission to determine the practicality of that suggestion. So we know the scope of this is uh, the fiscal statement is a one-page document. Yep. Right. Yep. And the uh, cover letter is a one-page one page document. Page. So uh, engaging council um, to to give us an opinion. So would be no more than, what do you say, in seven, eight hours work or tops on, on that, right, for the two pages? Four or five days. <laughs> four or five days, uh, you know. Are we talking, you know, Jones, a Jones lawyer firm rates or? Uh... No discounts here, folks, no discounts. <laughs> but, but really, but we sent that down and, and got an opinion back, wouldn't that? It would mean what? nothing, okay? okay. It, because anybody that wants to, uh, raise an issue about that still has the standing to raise an issue about it. It would still have to get into court, and I believe the city attorney's office would have to defend us. But okay, I, against the only, the only difference is that our procedure, and by the virtue of the fact that we have done that, we have made it a matter of record that we considered all of that, and we did our due diligence to make sure of a certain out of a certain equality. And in the and, process, and, and if if the, if we got wrong opinion or bad opinion, okay, I think yeah. I think that's a matter for somebody else to decide. But in, and in the process of, of doing this, you know, ahead of the mailing to please the city council and, and lower the temperature, whatever you think you're trying to do, you vitiated the independence that the municipal home rule law has given us. You have not ceded. Your, your motion does not um, uh, cede any authority back to the council. In other words, if they have suggestions for it, we can dismiss those out of hand. Can't right. We Absolutely. I, I was saying that this is what we're going to – my motion is, which has been seconded, is that this is what we intend to send out at a certain date for your information. That's it. It's all publicly available. And, and uh, I think it's just like everything. It's responsibility of the public to, to, to look at that document. It's not about that. We're, we're taking that as a, as a choice. But if we're making, what you're asking is the city council, are they in a position where they should review and judge no, what we're, we're sending out? For that. That's all, it's, it's all available to them. No, I, I think on. what we're... we're one, one, one second. Yeah. I, I just want some clarity on this. Because, BK, your motion said you want opinion back from them. No. That, no. For their but that, that, that's what I heard from Matt. Matt, am I incorrect? Um, you I said they would give their opinions. If we're sending it to them as a courtesy, this is what we propose to send exactly. out. Exactly. Um, and, and we get something back. We, we may get something back. I, we may not. Sound, sounds like not we may not, but it sounds like somebody has some issue with something. I would like to know what that issue is. I think the issue is, is, are there, is there going to be an attempt to block what we're sending out? And if that's the case, again, going back to what Gordon said, it's just trying to slow down the inevitable of we're going to send out documents that we all feel are very clean. We can't and exercise let's, our statutory it's, you know, It goes back to municipal home rule. I don't, how we're, would they have the power to block what we're going to send out? <laughs> Pat? The, they're going to say we, we will not fund that. Yes, if you could sort of put this hypothetical, you know, um, let us just imagine that all five members of the city council wanted to retain the current commission form of government. Sure. Um, we would still be, have our prerogative, just by, by virtue of our statutory and independent authority, to submit what we wanted and to, to sort of to see the authority about whether to, to, to inform the voters or not, to educate the voters or not, to, to them. You know, if they have the final say, then we don't have that kind of independence. And that's all how that is, you know, is, is set up, yeah, right? We don't want to reframe the argument that we're not asking for their approval. We, we are in no sense are we asking for their approval. That decision remains solely with this body here. I'd be interested in if they think there's anything that's going out 
that what they, they believe is advocacy. I may fully disagree with that. Let, and, yeah, and let, you know what's let interesting, let folks? Let we let would not even. Prior, I'm sorry, let me clarify. All I'm saying as courtesy is to let them see what we intend to mail out. We're not asking for approval. We're not asking for any comments. And we will send that out. But okay, we sent it to you before. Just as courtesy. What's wrong with that? We weren't even having this conversation until somebody mentioned there was a meeting this morning and the council wants to see what we're going to do. We're worried, about, you know, because they're worried about advocacy. We, if that hadn't come up, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But suddenly, what is this? Like, we're worried about this now? You know, we've got to do something to appease them? They have no standing. They're citizens. Yeah, they get it when the voters get it. I move the question. So the question is... Do you want to re do you want to restate it, BK? Yeah, I think well, you could just restate because the first one you said is send it out, send it to them and wait for their thoughts. Well, that that was that was. Later you modified that and said no, this is a courtesy. As a courtesy, what the motion is as a courtesy to let them know what it is that we intend to send out. It's a short communication. It, it will have everything that people will see. So this is what we intend to send out on October XX. Hard Thank copy. you. Hard copy. Yeah, hard copy. Let them see it. Does this include just a notification of where they can find it? No, he wants to send them he back. To the just send it to them. Or also say that these are also available at the website at this place. Give them the, give them the URL. And, and I'm and sorry, say, so those are like, and, and just as someone who's got to go birthday shopping for his wife tomorrow and do a lot of other uh, day jobs. I don't really want to go have to copy 125 pages and bring them down to manually give them. Can I? I don't think we need to send them the charter. So it would just be the, the links to where they are right. on Absolutely. the final version? The intent is for them to know what it is we intend to send out. That's it. So he's just asking for the language but, that but, you want to include. You want, uh, are you asking that we have a paper copy to the members, five members of the council? It no, doesn't have no. to. Be, it doesn't I, have to be paper. No, as long asking. as they right. can get so the, the material. And, and I would. I would make if, if you would wouldn't mind. I'll, I'll request that you accept a, an, a, an amended version of your motion, which is to put the. Charter to make sure the charter, the summary, the cover letter, and the fiscal note are all posted on the website as of tomorrow. So, and that the council gets a notification that they're all there for the entire public to see. And in the next uh, 10 days or more, they can see them uh, at their leisure. And uh, soon after that, they're going to be mailed in hard copy to everybody in town. That completely satisfies my motion. Satisfy yes. your objectives? Fine. Yes. I agree with that. Right. No, I, would, I, would, with that. I would second that. I would just give us um, sort of 48 hours because we need Jeff to make those changes. I'll have, I'll have it done at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, as, long um, as, as long as we make that notice I don't know to when the city Rob council or Beth before will have the, we do um, our mailing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know when Rob or Beth will have the ability to post it to our website. And I'm not sure how long it will take Susan Armstrong or whoever in the IT department to, to post it on there. So let's just give ourselves with, like a, with all deliberate speed. With all deliberate speed. Right. No, and, and, the, and the only point is is courtesy and for them to see it before we do the mailings to the public. And everybody in the public will be able to see it at the same time. Right. I don't see yes. any. Uh, I don't see any good yes. can come of giving the. Council a private viewing of this thing before it goes to the printer. Well, if you don't, I mean, well, that's my motion for them yeah. to see it ahead of time. Then they can see it, and so can everybody else. <laughs> Great. Right online. I, I move, online. I move the question again. Okay. All right. Wait, can I just can I make sure I'm right here? <laughs> yeah. How could you possibly be confused? <laughs> <laughs> if it's not right, this one's going to come back in. Uh huh. Oh, Matt seconded. Right. Gordon amended. <laughs> yes. Jeff sneezed. <laughs> Gordon amended. BK accepted. Yeah. The charter, the summary letter, and the fiscal note will all go on the website. And the cover letter. 
before the mailing to the public. Yeah. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? See, it's too much. It, 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 <coughs> I would have loved to have seen this it just unanimity. <laughs> in, in, in deference to my to my okay. colleagues, um, I, I, I move that we send that same information to our council in Albany, Bob. Bats, Batson, um, for uh, for his opinion um, on uh, on the documents. Do we have to re-retain him or see him? I'll second Matt's motion out of all right. Okay. eternal friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it still exists. Thank the Lord. Who did we adjourn? Right, we oh, wait, no, wait, we're voting on Matt's motion. motion. Send it also to Batson. I will send it to Bob Batson. To, to look, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's asked for his opinion. It's going right. to take an hour. All right. Okay. And, and, the, and so the question I should ask him, uh, Matt, is... Is this in yeah. line? Yeah. He wrote it. Do you believe... So, so I'm sorry, I just want to be... I want to be... Um, I don't write to attorneys very often, Matt. <laughs> so... That's quite evident. Uh, <laughs> Are there any legal difficulties with sending these documents out? All right. Well, isn't it sort of like do you do you believe there is anything which could be? No. Which could Are there be any legal difficulties? As advocacy at the taxpayer's expense if it's yeah. printed and mailed at you know. As advocacy do we have to be here at the taxpayer's yeah. expense. Um, sure. Fabulous. Um, I have not, the only uh, question I have, That's okay, man. and I That's may okay. know what some people will say, um, is I do not have any more meetings of the Charter Review Commission scheduled or envisioned. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but I will not, I will not uh, disband. I know, I'm, I worry that some people in the audience will... Some people will cheer because they may get some home cooked meals, well, and other people may uh, back on the other side. Uh, so we're not going to disband, but there are no meetings in the foreseeable future. Um, I would just encourage us all to um, to educate the public. My observation is that uh, there is a lot of interest. My, one of my students told me they were at Uncommon Grounds over the weekend, and they heard two couples in a very heated discussion. <laughs> of the charter and its importance and um <laughs> the sellers and the canes um, and uh trump's uh, lawyer uh and i think that is uh i think that is that's just true from what i'm sort of hearing anecdotally and so i encourage you all to you know go to parties with a big sticker that says ask me about the charter i, I think we'll we'll know that we've uh succeeded when we see that um uh the campaigns for public safety and mayor put on their literature that you have to turn the ballot over to vote for the candidates <laughs> <laughs> you need a vote on the uh, sending it to the lawyer Oh, all yeah, right, so all in favor of sending it to the lawyer? Aye. 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 Motion right. to adjourn. Yeah. All right, so uh, You haven't that was... gotten to him, have you? <gasps> What's that? I said you haven't gotten to him. Not that you'll know about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, super. Thank you. That's my neighbor. Thank you so much. Adjourn. You know. That's my neighbor. You got to get up early in the morning to get you around know, this I guy. can't get up that early. <laughs>